we don't want it. Oh, what happened? Setting it up the meeting for Facebook or whatever. No, it went, it died. Setting up your meeting? No, it died. Done redirecting to Facebook live page. No, that's not right. I'm going to do it again. There's nothing more I wanted. What the hell? Should we just join this? No. No, hang on, take me to a second. How do I close this? It's just live on Facebook. Yeah, that's all right, sorry. Oh, we are live. We're live? Hey everyone. Hey, sorry guys. Some technical difficulties here. Well, you in the love, office. love, love, love. You got the rookies here. So, hi, I'm Angelo. Good to see you some Savannah Bubalo. Guys, good to see you all. And tonight, we're talking about a unicorn apartment uh, here in DY. Everybody asks us for a unicorn opportunity, and uh, we've got one for you. Sorry, mate. I'll just get that going. Actually. So, um, so this one here is a really unique, um, and we'll give a bit of an idea tonight as well what the, where the uh, where the yields are um, and what uh, where we're currently sitting um, market rents at the moment based on when you purchase price in your market yet, which is um, and we'll explain what a yield is. So um, this is a unique opportunity at the moment that we've got in Central DY. Uh, if everyone knows where the Meriton site is, it's across the road. It's a block of. Uh, 85 units um, developed by the Northern Beaches' biggest developer, yep. Northern Beaches' biggest developer. Um, as in these guys are local, uh, they've built over about 11, 1200 apartments on the beaches and they're, um, they're known as uh, Gannett Developments, formerly known as Aranda. Yep. And uh, in this site here, it's one of the only apartments, uh, and I haven't actually seen this before in my experience, uh, where it's two apartments in one. Um, where it's a dual key apartment. You're paying one price, it's one title, uh, and you're getting two apartments here for, um, for, for one price. Yeah. So, so this one's going out for auction with us um, soon. And so we'll, we'll give you a bit of an idea um, how unique it is and yep. talk you through the, through the place. Yep. So really, hopefully that comes up for you guys. This is the apartment we're discussing and it's positioned right in the heart of DY. Well, it's quite bright. Quite bright, but um, apartment 507 at 1 St David Avenue, DY, and the floor plan. Oh, this is, is this going to work, Ange? Oh, here we go, here we go. Maybe it will. Oh, there you go. I'm going to hold this straight to this way. But as you can see, it's essentially a left wing, an east wing, and a west wing. Ange, how are you going with that? Yeah, okay. But essentially what you're getting is an eastern wing and a western wing where they're both one bedroom apartments. One title, two apartments that you can lease out separately. You've got dual incomes coming in off them. What do they rent for, Ange? So they rent uh, each side rents for just over 500 a week. Yep. Um, so you've got uh, your one side's currently rented 510 and the other side's around the 530. Uh, utilities included, but there's yep. very small amount uh, in regards to utility bills there. Um, but uh, yeah, as you walk in, one bedroom and one bedroom and being centrally located, I mean, if you look now, we're gonna talk a little bit about yields and what's the uh, the average yield out there for an apartment. Yeah. And um, both of us working in the industry for a while, we've actually noticed that with property prices where let's say 2012 to current, we've had such amazing growth yeah. um, and uh, amazing, uh, amazing uh, growth overall, we've actually, the rents have not jumped as yeah. much as what property prices have. Uh, so welcome to everyone as well on Insta. We're now live on Insta as well. <laughs> it's it's time. Time. Sorry, we're just learning. We're new to this. Um, so, um, so yeah, ba based on at the moment, what um, that apartment there is yielding uh, or returning, uh, it's returning just over 1100 a week. So let's say you purchase that apartment there it's currently got a guide of 850 to, uh, to 950,000 um, on the property. Yep. And uh, you purchase that apartment, let's say for around the 900 mark, it's currently returning just over the, uh, just over the thousand dollars a week. Yeah, so a thousand to even 1100, these apartments can lease out. So 
outfall. So to give you an idea, if, 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 if I bought an apartment in D1 for 850,000, the rent I'd probably be receiving on that is probably going to be around 600, maybe 650 a week. I think that's too much. Yeah, okay. Probably even, well, even probably at the moment. Yeah. yeah, two bedroom, two bathroom, one car apartment in D1 will lease for around, yeah, probably 600, maybe 650. It's, it's and those two two bedders now, the two bedroom, two bathrooms, most of them now are uh, going for around that sort of nine to a million mark, yeah. which is virtually the same price of this. Yeah. Um, so, so what we're saying is for a guide of 850,000 on this property, a potential return of a thousand anywhere to 1100 a week. I mean, I shouldn't say potential, it's easily a thousand dollars combined dual income on this. So even 1100s, you know, not even a, a, a super conservative figure on it. So um, great opportunity, great upshot. People say, where are there opportunities in real estate? This is an opportunity in real estate on the Northern beaches. Uh, that is going to serve you well for the, for a long term. And you know what? Something like this is even perfect for if you've got two kids and you want to invest in their future. They might be younger and you're saying, look, I want to get, get them both a property, something that's going to help them. You know, this is a property that can do that. You don't have to go out and buy two, but you're going to collect two rents that, you know, over the span as, of, as they grow and, and, and you can build a property portfolio for them. So, you know, massive upshot with what we're offering and what we're talking about right now. Yeah, yeah. Especially at the moment, you know, the fact that we're seeing... There's not many. There's not much stock at the moment out there for sale. Full stop. Mm -hmm. And you know, to, to get something at the moment in this ballpark, in this price point, um, you know, you're probably talking at the moment, uh, and that that rent's only going to be going up. Uh, the more DY gets more popular, because keep in mind these are right right in the heart of DY. So where the main bus stop is, you've got your shopping centre across the road as well. So it's a it's a pretty um, pretty good opportunity for yeah for for um especially for, for investment for a buyer yeah. So, how are you finding everything else out there? Mate, good. That's why I brought down a few other brochures. One of them is your property, Angelo. You can probably shed a bit of light on this one, 33 Nimby Avenue. You, I'll ask you how you're going first. I'll see how I'm going. How are you going on this property? Amazing. So, I'm I um, get the reflection off the. Uh... So, that one's uh, going, coming up for auction this weekend. What I find very rare about this one here is. Um, now, this is a completely, if you look at the area, it's a completely uh, level street. Uh, it's a flat block of land. It's sitting at about 640 square metres. And uh, the fact that you're so close to the water, you're up on the hill. How many people did you tell me you had through this? So, so far, this has been on the market for two weeks. There's 97 people at the moment that I've had, that I've had through this home in the two, week, two weeks. 97. 97. And I've got two, uh, two more opens this Wednesday and Saturday. And uh, it'll be an auction on site, uh, an interesting one in uh, Narawena there on Sunday. Yeah, wow. So it's... Uh, but, I think overall, it's again the reason why you get it. We've got a lot of homes um, and different homes and different opportunities around the area. But you know, that a home like that where a young family can at the moment come in and uh, purchase temporarily live in the place. It is very original, um, but it's not a house that needs to be knocked down or anything like that immediately. Um, and you can move in and actually, it's the perfect perfect site for someone to do a yeah. Oh, oh, I just saw Lisa's comment going back to the dual key. She said it's perfect. The husband can live in one side and the wife in the other side. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that one with you guys, Lisa. <laughs> but good call, good call. But um, so, I mean, look, the main thing I wanted to speak about was Angelo's obviously had huge traction on this property in regards to the number of buyers circulating in the market. And that, I mean, that's phenomenal. But would you say that's out of, out of the ordinary? Or do you think most homes on the beaches are seeing this kind of activity? like in Narrowena or Beacon Hill, that would be pretty standard for what we're seeing on every weekend, would you think? I think it, in regards to the numbers and the reason why this has had big numbers, um, it's at that entry level price point. Yeah. What's happened at the moment and what I've noticed in the last couple of months is that the market's moved and had that bit of extra jump in every sort of now, especially the younger buyers that are only approved to the 1.3 and 1.4 mark. They're coming into these entry level homes, and now these are jumping up to the next level. Like, you know, we're, we're getting approached at the moment. Those people that were looking for houses, do you now have any townhomes for sale? And all of a sudden, now in the weekend, in Narrowena and Brookvale, two townhomes hit anywhere, but both hit uh, 145 to 155 price point wow. for townhomes. So you're, you're almost like, well, where's, where's that uh, helping? So at the moment, I mean, the biggest lesson I've, um, I've been sort of telling people is, just jump in, especially the first home buyers. They're like, I can't buy a two bedroom that I want. Jump in, buy one bedroom if you can, because um, what's happening at the moment is the market is going to be creeping out. And um, 
you know, the, the people that are going to be worst off at the moment are people that are, are buyers, that, owners, I should say, that have sold in the last year and go, I'm going to rent for six months until I find the right place to buy it. <laughs> Not I, a good idea. I, I, uh, this is where it's, you know, um, it's a bit of a tricky situation because those buyers are like, okay, well, do I, do I, we get, we're going into presentations and uh, into, to, to look for anyone looking to sell. And they're like, okay, what do we do first? And they're like, if I don't find the right place, because there's not many properties on the market, I don't want to sell. Um, banks, a lot of them at the moment aren't giving buyers the extra money until they get a result on their units as well. But the problem is that I think the most important, while a property's on the market for sale, is try and keep looking, try find something to buy. Um, just because at the moment, it's um, properties are creeping up and you could be out there renting for six months and in six months, if the market does do 10%, technically on a million dollar or $1.5 million house in this instance, there goes $150,000, $100,000, just like that. So yeah. um, it's happening. It's um, happened before and we've experienced um, what the the, uh, the what the outcomes are there for, for a lot of owners. And uh, look, everyone's in that same position. It's almost like, what do you do first? Yeah, yeah. And I've got a similar scenario. This was another apartment not an apartment, this is a duplex. I've just launched in Warriorwood, 105 McPherson Street. There's a townhouse for 1.4. One, one, one a townhouse, well, I'll, it's, it's a duplex, and it's a duplex, can't, can't down. But um, you know what, it's comparable to a townhouse. It's 303 square meter um, lot size with it. That has got a guy of 1.4 million, beautiful, you know, three bedrooms up, upstairs, living, dining, downstairs in great condition, double lockup garage. The standout feature to that, Torrance Tidal, 19 groups inspected that property just on Saturday. So there's big numbers out there. If you're a buyer, and this is probably something and we should maybe just have a, a quick chat about is everything I notice that's advertised on realestate.com seems to be auction, like auction everywhere. And buyers clearly, um, particularly first home buyers, they're not sure, you know, what are the prices I should be paying? What tips can we give to people that are out there looking now? They're going to an auction. They've gone to the first open home. The agent says it's an auction. The agent says, oh, I don't know where it's going to go. It could go anywhere based on what's selling in the street is X, Y, Z. If, if someone came to you, a brother or sister, Angela, and said, Angela, where do I start? What advice could you give them as, as a buyer going to an auction to buy a property? I think, questions. <laughs> the hard questions. I think, look, at the moment, number one's budget for everybody. Yeah. Um, and everyone's got their upper limits. But I think... It's more, once you've been approved for amount, I still get a lot of owners and a lot of, um, I, I wouldn't pay over or, you know, I wouldn't go over that amount. Even though some of some buyers are actually approved for that, for a figure. Um, it, it, I, I would almost turn around and say, you know what, jump and put your best foot forward in most cases. Um, auctions are very, very tricky because auctions, you can, uh, you can be very lucky at an auction. Mm. Um, and I've seen auctions where um, there's been only two people bidding. Uh, or two people and those two people have wanted it so so much and those two people have driven the price um, either higher and you could almost imagine what happens if one person just backs out a lot less and then that person that could have spent more is it forced has you know would you say would you would that person say hang on i just saved quite a bit of money because i've got a check you know so there's a situation um I st I'm, and i'm still saying this so i had an auction in december where i had a lot of lot of purchases this is one in par parade in narrowena mm -hmm. and i had a um anticipating a very, very big auction, a lot of groups through the property and a lot of buyers were just, you know what, this is going to go out of my league, go out of my league and out of my league. And nobody showed, not, I should say, not wouldn't say nobody, that two people that showed up at auction, one was not in a position to buy there and then. And the one person that just missed out on another auction, saw it for the first day, turned up and we negotiated it there and then at auction and they bought it. And they'll, they said, this is better than what we've been looking at. So, so it just shows you that uh, you so know, you're saying sometimes it's better to be the buyer to turn up at the auction because you don't know what's going to happen under the scenario? Or yeah, what? I would say there's, it doesn't hurt hurt you to turn up. You've seen a place you like, turn up, register. Um, I mean, most important, get your finances in place. Um, that's another big thing is we're getting a lot of a lot of buyers at the moment. You, If you don't have your finances in place and you have uh, only just started looking um, and you fall in love with something, you'll get a buyer that is ready to go that's just unfortunately going to beat you, beat, beat you to the race. Yep. So um, yep. that's, that's, that's very important to get your, get your pre approvals done. Um, and 
you know, a stepping stone. So uh, in regards to whether you do a lot of buys at the moment, I'm finding a lot of, um, you know, you look at your Narawina house, um, you know, out of that, I've actually met a lot of people that have needed to sell their properties first before they buy. So now we're getting everything in motions moving to basically look at their property sales first so they can actually be ready to go. So when they're sold, yep. they're good to then jump at something, uh, but they're not ready to buy that because of that reason. Yeah. So um, speed yeah. things up. That's the only thing I can say, don't sit on it because you know, you even take another month and sit on it with your broker. There's a month that right now it's, it's hard to dictate where the market's going to be. And yeah. I think in three months time, um, it's definitely moving. It's definitely moving. I was going to say that, and, and from the experiences, just that one open on Saturday at McPherson Street, a lot of a lot of younger families, first home, not first home buyers, but younger home buyers coming through. And the best advice I can tell them is, is look, get your get your budget right, just like Angelo mentioned. Um, but the property, like for instance, that home, that home will be running all the way to the auction campaign. So a lot of buyers don't like to buy at auction. They'll say to me openly, Stavan, I'm not comfortable with buying at auction, and I can understand it. But understand that auction will also give you as a purchaser the most transparency you're ever going to have in a buying procedure in real estate. Because understand this, if, if there's 19 groups coming through a property and there's significant interest and it's not going to auction, what's that agent going to say, Ange? He's going to say, give me your best offer on a contract, on an envelope. And what's the buyer always say? Where's the other offers? Where's the other interest? How do I know I'm not paying too much? At an auction, you've got complete transparency as a buyer to see this. So... Um, what I'd say is I know that there is a large percentage of property currently marketed and being sold at auction, but as a buyer, you know, I would say go, turn up, do your research, go out and see what's sold in the street, sold in the area, sold in the suburb. Um, that will give you a better idea. And that's easy to do. You can jump on realestate.com or domain, punch in the suburb name, sold properties, and it'll bring them all up for you. This information's at your fingertips. So I'll do that, check out what's selling and then turn up to the auction because like Angelo said, a lot of people, you know, there's circumstances where people don't turn up, believe it or not. Um, and you could be in a great position to capitalise on that as a buyer. There's more buyer. There's more houses as well. And this is um, a bit of a, an industry fact as well, regards to why there's more houses going up for auction and compared to units. And uh, you tend to find a lot of the house buyers, they've got a much larger deposit. Mm. So when the bank, uh, when you go for approvals with the bank, that's the other big thing. There's a lot of purchases that unfortunately just can't purchase at auction because their bank requires a valuation on the unit or the property, the house. Um, and it's very risky to sometimes purchase it at auction. So that's another big thing is to try to speak, speak to your broker and ask them, am I in a position to, if I saw a property, to go, to go and buy it at auction? Um, and if that's the case, um, that's another win because that means you, you've actually got, it opens the door to more properties in um, yeah. for your auction ones as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good points. But a lot of good properties coming on the market with us here and, and no doubt in your areas as well. So, you know, go for it. As a buyer, go for it. When's the best time to buy it? When you're ready. So go for it. Yep. Guys out there. Yep, yep, yep. And we're here to help as well. So we, uh, we say this quite often, but if you're, if you're a purchaser in our market area, or even if you're a person not in our market area, you can contact us. Novak's got the 24 hour chat that's available at novak.com.au. Um, you know, we, we're here to help you guys. We can answer questions for you. Um, and we like to do that. We like to do that. Yep, yep. So um, we're always available. Um, the other thing I was going to say is the rental market, how you're seeing things out there in the rental market. Uh, I know it was quite slow for a while, but it seems to have found its feet a little bit better now. Yeah, rents, from what I believe and what we're hearing uh, from our meetings, is that they have, they have started to pick up. Mm -hmm. So, the demand, I think now with especially, and we're sort of talking more about DY because DY's got your nine and a half thousand properties, yeah. and that sort of dictates as well with the rentals of where a lot of the beaches are, um, which is more your unit suburbs like your Manly, your DY, and your Narrabeen. So with your DY, um, at the moment, after after summer, it's generally or towards the end of summer, it's generally pretty good around that February March even April time. Yeah. Um, the slower months in experience have always generally been July, August, um, middle of winter yeah. for rental. So uh, very different sales, sales we've found, whereas um, there's generally been a big drive to launch properties in spring uh, or that sort of uh, September, October, November, and that February, March, April, that's now, um, we've noticed that it's obviously gone. Um, two years in a row now, uh, 
almost three years actually, we haven't seen a massive flood of properties come on the market yeah, in the spring. And uh, eh? even now, like we yeah. we need properties. Like there's a there's not enough out there for purchases. Um, there's a lot more uh, demand than supply. Um, but I think um, yeah, with regards to selling, it's a bit more of an all year thing. So uh, winter itself, I mean, we're we're not really a very um, a city where it's flooding every single Saturday afternoon. I know we've had a, a, you know, a bit of rain lately, but at the end of the day, as far as weekends go over um, winter, um, you know, whether my property is going to look good, it's been great the last couple of winters. So, yeah. um, you know, I don't think it's whenever you're ready to go, it's, it's good. But with regards to the answer your question with rentals, um, generally middle of the year is a little bit of a slower period. Mm. Um, let's wait and see what this year's going to do because there, there are going to be, keep in mind, there's a lot of buyers that, are in that position now they need somewhere to move and they aren't able to find the right property so they're going to be for they're going to be jumping into the rental market as well so you've got, you've got to look at it. like on an average property locally even in an apartment we're, we're getting anywhere between 20 to 30 people look at one property so there's a lot of people out there looking to buy looking for homes, looking for homes. one thing you touched on Ange, which is kind of off topic with with your house but was obviously everybody we had some really big weather over the last uh not last weekend the weekend before um and you know hopefully everyone's safe at, out there and there was a, you know quite a lot of disturbances made but as a tenant we we were inundated with phone calls from tenants um coming to us saying guys look there's rain coming in something you know it's flooding xyz in these circumstances um the best point of call and I, look I, I can't really say keep it in mind for next time because hopefully these aren't too common, these these amounts of rainfall. Um, but this is what the SES services are there for. This is what the emergency services are there for. So a lot of people were calling the agents saying, guys, it's flooding, it's coming down my, my, my balcony, into the, you know, down my driveway or X, Y, Z. And a lot of these factors your agent can't control. So your best point of call, particularly if you're in a situation where your, your safety is at risk or your family's safety is at risk, there's, there's major damage to your property, take advantage of these uh, emergency services. They did a great job, they responded phenomenally across the northern beaches these guys so hats off to you um and i'd like to say that's what they're there for and hopefully we, we don't need to use them too much but if you're ever in a situation as a as a tenant um please you know feel free to, to take advantage of those professional services um and then come to us because there's certain things we can do but you know we can't we can't look after you as well as these emergency guys can so um just yeah food for thought done well hopefully uh answered questions tonight so um once again um yeah thanks thanks very much for watching thanks and, for viewing. Um, and uh yeah hopefully we'll see you out there in the real estate world and like i said use us contact us we've got that 24-hour chat at um novak.com.au angelo myself lisa mark michael um the commercial team the rental team everyone's there you know love to help you and, and answer any questions you have so, thank you again thanks guys thanks Bye. guys